Welcome back pilots to DCS World's F-15C Basic Fundamentals. This will be the final course for the F-15C. We'll go over the TEWS, Tactical Electronic Warfare System, which includes the RWR, Radar Warning Receiver, and the ANALQ-135 ECM pod, or Electronic Countermeasures. Okay, um, and then we will end it with shutting the aircraft down. Um, I want to start out by saying, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I love seeing the channel grow. It doesn't have very many subscribers yet, but uh, week by week, it's getting larger and larger, so I really appreciate the support. Um, we may have something really exciting coming to the channel. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm waiting on some information. Hopefully, I'll know by, the, by this weekend, um, in which case, uh, with approval, I'll be making the announcement. Okay. Um, so look forward to that. If not, um, then obviously we'll get into the next aircraft. Um, I'm thinking about doing one of the helicopters. We'll see what happens. But getting back on track here. So we're going to dive right into it. Let me unpause my camera here. Whoa, that was weird. And let's start with the RWR. So we're going to lock the RWR here. Let's get the autopilot up so I don't crash into a mountain. First thing I'm going to do is get our cursor up. So looking at the RWR, you can see that we have our 12 o'clock line, 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock, etc. You have a 3, 9 line. This is important to pay attention to, especially in defensive maneuvers. Okay. And you can see that it identifies the TEWS, the Tactical Electronic Warfare System. Okay. Now, I also mentioned the ECM pod, just so you guys understand where the ECM pod is. ECM pod is up here on top of the left vertical stabilizer, the left tail. Okay. You can see the little pod up on top. What that does is emits a 360 degree... Um, basically radar interference screen okay so think of it if we stay on track with the radar being a flashlight what this would do is put a uh, smoke screen in front of the flashlight right so instead of looking directly at us now they have to look flat point their flashlight through a whole bunch of smoke right makes it harder to see us okay but we'll get into that in just a minute here on, on effective ways to use it as well all right so obviously in order to understand the rwr we need a radar contact so let's get one All right, so let's zoom in here and see what just came up here. I'm going to go ahead and pause the sim. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is this half circle up on top. The solid half circle indicates the most recent contact picked up by the RWR. Okay, so you could have one, two, three, four, five. I think it's up to eight targets, if I remember correctly, up on the RWR. Um, and in which case, um, the most recent one, the most recently located radar signature would have the um, solid half circle up on top. Then you have the diamond. The diamond indicates the highest threat radar signature. Threat is determined by the strength of the radar contact. Okay, so how bright the flashlight is pointing at us. Is it a big spotlight? You know, for example, like this is an A50, which we'll go over. We can see by the 50 here real quick, um, which is the Russian AWACS, right? So the A50, um, any kind of AWACS system, is a very large spectrum radar radar uh, signature right it's looking at everything it's looking at ground contacts looking at air contacts okay very broad radar it's a huge floodlight going in all directions okay where for example like a mig-29 is going to be more single focus like what we have right we're, we're looking at a 60 degree you know um, um, azimuth okay and then when we lock a target up we're going to go 100 percent you're the only one i'm looking at okay so that's how the diamond is determined okay the location of the diamond is the highest threat Okay, and it's just, the threat is determined by this, the intensity of the radar beam. And then this little carrot up on top of the 50 that you see here indicates it's an airborne target. Anything that is picked up with a radar signature that is in the air will have that carrot above it. It lets you know immediately that's an aircraft. Okay, um, so if you see something else down here, for example, like a 10 or 11 or something to that effect, and it doesn't have that diamond, it means it's a ground source. Okay, um, it could be a search radar, it could be a um, uh, uh, targeting radar, there's all kinds of things it could be. Okay, and we'll see some of that here in a little bit. All right, now the other thing that you want to be aware of is, let's go ahead and get up another target here. Okay, so they're on top of each other. And I'm sorry for that, it's kind of uh, just the way it goes, but I want you guys to see something here. So we can see real quick that the uh, half circle has now moved positions, okay? So this is the most recently picked up contact on the RWR. You can see the carrot right above it there, indicating it's an aircraft. Notice the diamond has changed locations, so the radar intensity uh, is significantly stronger with this aircraft, 
Okay, it's been identified as a much stronger threat. And you can see this 29. Now the 29 um, in this case is actually a MiG-29, but I don't want you guys to get confused on that real quick. Um, there, if you have multiple aircraft, for example, like the MiG-29 and the Su-27 share the same radar suite, okay, meaning that they both have the same radar on the nose. So they're both going to come up as MiG-29s, okay? Make sure that you are not using this strictly to identify targets. You can know that it's a Russian aircraft, okay? You can know it's a Russian fighter, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a um, uh, MiG-29 or an Su-27, right? I think there's actually three different aircraft that use it. Um, make sure that you're using your radar and your IFF to actually identify the target because, believe it or not, depending on what you're fighting, is going to, as you get better and better, it's going to change the way that you attack them, okay? It's going to change the way you approach them, Okay. Now, the biggest thing that I want to point out is notice the MiG-29 is in front of the A-50. But, I'm going to show you guys something. If we go to our F-10 map, there's our A-50, there's our MiG-29. Okay? So, what's wrong with that picture, right? Well, if we go back here, the A-50 should be in front of the 29. The reason why it's doing this is your the higher threat target will be closer to the aircraft. Okay, this is an alerting system. It's not a radar. It's not, you know, your radar is what's going to give you your range of, of different aircraft and targets. Okay, so you need to use your radar to identify range. This indicates threat. The closer it is to your aircraft, which is this symbol right here in the middle, the more in danger you are. Okay, so you need to pay attention to that real quick. Don't mistake this for range. Now, you can mistake or use it for um, positioning. You know, this MiG-29 and the A-50 are truly at our 12 o'clock. Okay, but, um, but the... A-50 is actually closer to us. The 29 has just been identified as a stronger threat, and that's why it's closer to us. All right, guys. So now we're going to take a look at the RWR um, and the information it gives us against uh, ground targets. In this case, we're going to be using an SA-11 system as our example. So you can see here that we still have our diamond. We can see that the SD here, the SD indicates the search radar. We still have our half circle on top um, indicating the most recent target. Um, and then we can see the uh, aspect to uh, our aircraft. Now, now, perfect timing, I was just about to mention. Um, we also now have seen the SA-11 targeting system come up. We can see that the half circle has moved, moved its position. Okay, here's the part that gets where it gets critical. So listen to the auditorial information. Okay, so that long beep indicates that the um, uh, targeting radar has locked us. Okay, so we're no longer just being passively seen. Okay, it's not a passive radar scan anymore. Um, they've actually locked us up and are getting ready to shoot. And actually, it looks like they have fired on us. So I want you to notice that you see this half circle that's come up underneath, right? So now we have a full circle. What you're actually seeing here is a full circle with our half circle of the most recent radar contact on top. Okay, so when a um, radar signature has locked onto you, you get the fast, the fast pulse, the dee 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 dee. Okay, and then when it fires on you, okay, when you uh, missile launch is detected, a full circle will be around the diamond and blinking. But if that, remember, we have that half circle of the most recent uh, RWR contact. Okay, that's still sitting on top. So if it ever looks like a half circle blinking, that's still the same information. Okay, what it is is the full circle, but you got that, that solid half circle on top. Okay, so either a full circle blinking at you or just the half circle blinking at you indicates a missile's been fired. Okay, and you're, when I unpause it here, you're going to see it here a different tone. It's going to go doo doo doo. Okay, pay attention to that. That is, again, also an indication that a missile has been launched. Okay, so here we go. Okay, there's the missile identifier. What we're going to do is break and get the hell out of here. We're going to turn the missile to our 3-9 line. And he's far enough out. We shouldn't have to do much more evading than that. We can just outrun it. <clears throat> okay, so we've defeated the missile. I'm not too worried about the missile anymore. Um, but notice that now you can see the full circle. Okay, so if you notice the half circle changed positions, okay, it's back over on the search radar. What had happened is we had temporarily lost, um, when I made that maneuver, we lost um, the signal from the search radar, right? We didn't pick it up anymore. So then when it popped back up on radar, you got the half circle that moved back to the search radar because it picked up a new uh, uh, contact, the RWR did, excuse me. 
All right, and then now when I unpause, you can see the SA11 is going to have that full circle blinking. So as you see that, this indicates, and this can be on any target, whether it be ground target, whether it be um, uh, air to air target, doesn't matter. If it's fired on you, you're going to get that full circle or that half circle blinking on you. Either one, you want to watch for both. Okay. Um, also with ground targets, as we discussed, do notice, I don't know, can't remember if I pointed out already, do notice that the half tar the uh, half carrot above the um, identifier is missing. Okay. So just like I was saying before, if it has a carrot above it, uh, it's an aircraft. If it doesn't, it's a ground target. All right, okay. guys. So the last thing I'm going to show you is what happens when a air-to-air -air contact fires an active radar missile. So we've got a MiG-29 out there. He's coming at us. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually talk about the ECM. I forgot I haven't touched on that yet. So we're going to hit echo on our keyboard. And you can see that the ECM now is what it's doing is warming up. Notice that the blinking cross in the middle of our RWR. That's the uh, electronic countermeasure pod warming up. Okay, and now it's actually active. So we're popping smoke, right? We're, we're um, throwing smoke in front of that MiG-29's flashlight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wait for him to get close enough. So there he is. All right, so now he's locking us. There's that fast home we were talking about. Now he should fire an active radar missile, the R-77. So you have the AMRAM, the AM-120, and the R-77 is the opposing missile. All right, so he's launched his missile. We're going to turn, put him off to our notch here. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. Okay, so notice what's happened now. The missile has gone pit bull, and now we get an indication on the RWR. So it's got the most recent contact. It's got the diamond. Notice the M. This is the missile that's actually tracking our aircraft. Anytime you see an M, that's even like double trouble, right? Notice that the MiG-29, we still have the carrot indicating it's an aircraft. We have the A-50 down here, the AWACS. Okay, so they get kind of on top of each other, so you really got to pay attention. But when you see the M here, what this is, is his missile has gone pit bull. He no longer has to maintain lock on us in order for this missile to hit. Okay, so if you guys ever see that, that's what that is. It's a missile that's coming after you that is pit bull. Okay, so it's an active radar missile. So we're going to go ahead and defeat this guy. Now remember I was talking earlier briefly, okay? So we're going to use chaff to defend against the missile. We've put it on our 3-9 line. See the missile back there? The, the rocket is missed, okay? And you can see that he's fired again. And again, his missile is going to have to continue to turn. So we're just going to keep him on our bank, pop in some chaff every now and then. What chaff is is uh, little pieces of radioactive material that um, basically tries to fool the enemy uh, radar guidance into thinking that it's a target. All right, and then now for a f grand finale, we'll come around and shoot this jerk. Well, I don't know my radar turned off. Oh, he's fired another missile. Fox 3. Splash. All right. So, real quick touch up on a few things. Um, I may do a later a video later on about air, the basics of air combat maneuvering. Um, haven't decided yet. Um, I hope the labels made it easy for you guys to at least see what was going on there for a brief second. 
that's not what this tutorial was about. I just thought it'd be a fun addition. But so recovering the RWR. Know your signals. Understand what you're looking at. Okay. Um, the biggest thing are the threat indications. All right. The fast pulse. You've been locked. The repeating long tone. Okay. Uh, missile launch. Um, that beeping right there. A new track is on your RWR. Okay. I hope this really smoothed out on how to use the RWR. Um, a lot of the symbology is more or less just identifying what you're looking at. The big thing to be alerted to is the, the the tones and the symbology of threat, right? The blinking circle, you've been fired on, okay? That's an indication of missile launch. Um, the M, obviously a major one, that's a missile. Um, the fast pulse, okay? Again, you've been locked up by an aircraft. Somebody's either, you know, whether it be a buddy, you know, but or an enemy, you want to pay attention to who's tracking you, okay? It's going to have the diamond on it. Um, with that being said, I will, uh, let's go ahead and take her down, bring her in for a landing, and then, uh, we'll wrap up there. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, so we're back, coming up on our final here on, at Tbilisi Airport. We are all configured for landing. Dirty configuration is what they call it, by the way, if you guys ever hear that terminology. That's the uh, indication that an aircraft's in the landing configuration. They call it dirty. And then when you clean up your aircraft is when you bring your flaps up, put your speed brake down, things like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I know some, uh, some are better than others. Uh, it's my first time running through this kind of a thing. Um, I've had a great time with it. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a learning experience for me. Um, I really appreciate the feedback that I've gotten. I've gotten a lot of really good feedback that has really made me really happy. Um, a lot of you guys seem to have really enjoyed it. Um, I really appreciate the good comments, feedback about the, um, the uh, radio um, modulation that I was trying to do in the initial uh, videos, I know. A lot of you guys said that you couldn't hear, so I really appreciate that feedback. So I really hope you guys have, have dug on this, and I really hope that uh, you really like what's yet to come. A little long on the approach, that's all right. Little bounce. So we'll get her over to the uh, taxiway and or the parking and call it a day. All right, so we're approaching the taxi area or the parking area, excuse me. We're gonna go just to that yellow line. Disappears under the nose there. Okay, so shutting her down, pretty simple. There isn't a whole lot to it with the F-15. So the first thing we'll do is go to our exterior lights. Okay, so we're going to hit right control and Lima. Kill the navigation lights. Right alt, right control and Lima. Kill the anti-collision lights. And right alt and Lima to kill the nose wheel light. Oops, sorry. And then we're simply going to do right alt and or right control and end, excuse me. There goes the right engine. Right shift and end. Left engine. L for the cockpit lights. Right shift and L for electrical power. And left control Charlie for the canopy. And ladies and gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, making these tutorials for you guys. I truly hope you have found them valuable and useful. I look forward to doing the next series, whatever that may be. 
Um, throw in the comments below what you guys think the next one should be. I'd be happy to hear what your input is, what you guys need, and what you're looking for. Until the next time, guys, this is uh, Overkill. We'll talk to you next time.